Welcome back everybody once again. A couple videos ago we had this Kenworth in here. We replaced the fan clutch solenoid and we noticed that the fan uh, hub here was leaking air. So we're going to tackle that project today. It just started to rain so that's a big plus. Just looking here what we got to do to get this thing apart. Probably going to take this charge air pipe off here. We got four brackets all the way around this fan hub here. We're going to drop them off. We might have to take this radiator mount off here so we can feed stuff out through the side. There's more room on this side than the other side. So we'll probably start here. And uh, to keep this video from getting to be four hours long, I'm going to kind of do it in bits and pieces here. Show you what we're doing as we do it. And uh, if need be, we'll make two videos out of it. So that's where we're going to start taking some stuff apart here I'll show you exactly what we do you know step by step and uh, you can see how tight it is in there probably gonna be a, a knuckle buster in there we're probably gonna stuff some cardboard in there to keep from dinging up that that radiator this ain't that old this fan clutch was just done a year ago it actually grenaded in a catastrophic failure and took out the radiator um, all, all the belts all kinds of stuff air compressor a real mess so I don't know why it's bad again already but we're gonna get in there and replace this thing so we'll be back here shortly and show you what's up all right we're back here here's where we're at there was one of these on each side of the motor right here we took those off we took this charge air pipe off right here plug the holes so we don't get any crud in there this torque arm or the radiator mount here mounts right here we just loosened that up flipped it back out of the way then down below there was one something like this but it was a, a bigger one we uh, dropped that off and we just pulled this shroud back away from the engine here so that's where we're at right now and we're gonna see if we can't get back in there without taking any more stuff apart and uh, we'll, we'll see what kind of tools we need and and uh, how we come out we'll be back in there a few minutes that all in all probably took a half hour that's partially because it's it's raining pretty good here so we're doing the best we can all right y'all so here's where we're at um, all this was off we showed that so to get the fan off the hub there's six bolts I'm sorry six studs there all we had to do was take the nuts off the front side of the fan here it was pretty darn tight but we were able to get it without I was really hoping we wouldn't have to lean the radiator or anything but we made it uh, I didn't end up putting any cardboard in there because he's got a a nice cross member in there that kept us from dinging anything we did release the fan belt just so we could wiggle this shroud around and stuff without dinging up the the belt and we're gonna go ahead and put a new belt on as long as we got this off because that'll be just so much easier so right now uh, we're just taking a new one out of the box here. Let's go take a look at that. All right, so here's our new fan hub. Here's everything that came with it. We've got this O-ring here. Here's our, this is all pre-assembled hub here. Um, should just be pretty much plug and play. And then it did come with new hardware. We got two different styles of uh, bolts here. Don't know that we're going to need them both. But uh, th I think this is designed to fit more than one engine. So we'll hold on to that old hardware. That's pretty nice stuff. Um, yours might have... Can you open that, Mike? Um, the, fan, the, the fan on this one was held on with 14 millimeter nuts. But yours might have something different. It might be these hex heads. Cap screws. So you have to see what's on yours, and uh, we're gonna get to see what it takes to get that old one off of there, and then come back and and show you what's what. All right, we're over here on the passenger side of the truck. We've run into some clearance issues inside here. I was thinking we were gonna be able to get away without doing it, but we're gonna disconnect this radiator support on the passenger side, and then pull part of this charge air pipe off, and just just lean the radiator just a little bit we can almost make it but just not quite 
and it's easier to do that than it is to be busting stuff up so we'll do that be back shortly also here we've discovered we got to move that little clamp on that radiator pipe too just to free it up so the uh, radiator can lean ahead just a little bit <laughs> half inch nuts on the clamp all right so a little trick here there's a uh, there's some holes through that hub where you have to get to the inside there to get this thing dismounted from the hub and the clutch needed to turn about I don't know half inch not even to get the holes to line up so we can get her a wrench through there and you got to find a way to make that clutch turn so you can see I got a pry bar wedged in there and then we put a big channel locks on the center hub there that blue part there's two of us doing this one of us held the hub the other one took the pry bar and just just turned a little bit turned that hub to get the holes to line up so we can get our wrench in there so you'll notice we pulled the fan blade out we're able to push the the radiator ahead see how that moves now enough to get that the fan blades out so that gave us enough room here so we'll uh get our wrenches together here to get that off and we'll be back and show you the next step hey guys i just want to show you a little more clearly so you can fully see what we did there with having to rotate that uh clutch a little bit see on this one where them holes go all the way through show them sticker see that goes in there those bolts that are in there are what mounts this to your to your truck so this clutch was rotated so you couldn't get all the way through to them bolt heads that's what we did there so uh we got to find the proper size uh allen head here we might have to go buy a, a socket set and uh shall return here's what that hub's gonna look like without the with the clutch on it without the clutch on it uh we looked in there it's pretty dirty in there and uh some oil which could mean the compressor is passing some oil shooting it in there but we just took uh put some brake clean on a rag and uh cleaned up in there a little bit you can see got her nice and clean so we're almost ready to put the new one on we're gonna show you that here in a second so here's what we found the reason why that was leaking see that little white seal there he's pointing to okay that's the new one and here's the old one it's missing so missing that little whatever you want to call it seal o-ring whatever is the reason why that was leaking air you could just get that little piece i guess if you're doing it yourself you're not paying for the labor and but if you're paying somebody they're probably going to be uh, all of six hundred dollars in labor doing this if you're paying somebody in labor to do it you might as well replace the part because you don't want to you know pay twice but that's uh something you'll have to decide and this new one here we're just gonna put a little bit of just a just a hair of petroleum jelly around that just for lubrication while we're putting it in uh, i don't know if that's proper or not but we don't want to wreck that sliding it on there so uh we did you know compare them here they are the same we're good to go so <clears throat> it's gonna mount up on the truck like this you can see through them holes that's where those cap nuts are gonna go with the hex head do you remember what size hex we got for that five sixteenths i think it was a five sixteenths uh hex head socket is what you'll need be very careful taking them out take your time do not strip them you will wish you weren't born if you do that uh and, and careful not to break one off they're probably going to come out a little hard but maybe you need to you know rock rock your ratchet back and forth loosen them up spray them if you need to maybe you need to tap on them whatever you need to do but take your time be very careful so <clears throat> we're gonna all we're gonna do right now slap this on the truck and throw these six hex head bolts in for the next step we have the new hub on 
we got all those cap nuts in the in the hole to mount it to the uh, to the truck and I put some of the nuts on that are those nuts aren't really supposed to go on yet they go over the fan but we need something to hold on to when we tighten up those cap nuts to get them torqued down to proper spec you're gonna need to look up for your vehicle proper torque spec I don't feel comfortable uh, telling other people all the time so you know call somebody look it up online whatever find out your proper torque spec okay we have the new hub on torqued in the in the place there torqued the spec we put the fan on here and uh, torque them to spec. We're having a little trouble getting this shroud back into place. It's being a real pain in the butt. So we, we put these supports on, just finger tight for now. Uh, we had to loosen up this crankcase breather a little bit to help get the fan back in there. Um, this is uh, definitely an easier job with two people, two sets of hands. So keep that in mind. One person could do it, but it's going to be way harder. Uh, we're going to have to uh, work on finagling this back in place here. And I'll let you know how, how we did it here when I get it in. All right, one final shot here for the day. We're running out of daylight. It's starting to rain much harder here. So we're going to get a, call it a rain delay here shortly. But I don't know where we left off put these on we got them two bottom bolts and that bracket in down there we put this crankcase breather back on the bolt going across for this radiator pipe we'd loosen that we tighten that back up uh, let's go over to the other side here I don't know if I mentioned or not but that that top support for the shroud, you have to loosen the AC compressor here. So the bolts go into the block there. So putting that back in. We're gonna get these, all the supports back on and then uh, bolt it up to the shroud. And then if we have enough daylight left, we'll put the charger pipes back on both sides. Otherwise we'll do that in the morning. All right, so now it's the next morning here. We ran out of daylight yesterday. Had to call it a day. Today's much better and sun shining and no rain. So just want to recap here everything we put back together. Put this charge air pipe back on, all the clamps. It was a good opportunity to put new belts on while we had the fan blade off is much easier. So we did that. Put the compressor bolts back in that hold that plate on that mount in there um, so that's on we got the bottom mounting bracket on down there radiator support here and uh, that's all we took off on this side so a good thing we were checking this because we found two bolts this morning that we forgot to put in so we just threw them in over here we had this charger pipe off we loosened up the crankcase breather just to give us some room to get the fan back in. I had this support off. Radiator support here. That's main support down there for the fan shroud. And then this U-bolt right up in here that supports that radiator pipe. We had that loosened up, pushed out of the way. And I think that's it. So we got our air filter back in here. We're about ready to do a test run here. This truck has a manual switch, so we can turn that fan on and off at will. And like the, the Freightliner I have is only, it doesn't have a switch, it's, it does its own thing. So we'll start her up and build some air pressure here and come back and see how it works.
All right, so you can see we're working. Uh, he turned the fan manually on and off a couple times. Working great. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention before you start the truck and everything, just uh, give the blades a turn. Make sure they're not hitting the fan shroud because you don't want to break a blade or something. We've uh, decided that this job would really suck for one person. So if you have an extra set of hands, that would really be great because uh, especially if you got to turn that clutch, you need one person to hold the hub, another person to to uh, turn the clutch to get them holes to line up to get in there to pull it off. So that area is just too tight to get both arms in there. And then, uh, you know, a few other things. As with everything, it's nice to have an extra set of hands. So that's it for today. I hope that was a helpful video and hope hopefully it, it, it uh, we did a decent job showing you. And go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and I hope to make a lot more videos like this, maybe even on some different kinds of trucks. Uh, eventually we'll hit one like you have, and then you'll know how to do it yourself. So have a great day.